Hi everyone, this is Adam Fox. This is Ephraim Driz. And today we're going to be talking about Dashboard Your Scorecard on Excel. Um, this is coming from the Journal of Accountancy article in February 2011 by Mark Lehman, Carol Lehman, and Jim Fiesel. Okay, so starting off, uh, what we basically have here is a table of information in Excel. Um, it gives us a bunch of different sales information for a company. Um, and what we've done is uh, we've actually taken this information and turned it into a table, uh, just a fully functional table, um, which you should already know how to do at this point. And then we've also created a, a couple of different pivot tables with that information, um, which we have already learned how to do as well, so we're not going to require that um, as part of the test for this, for this go. Um, but the main thing that we're focusing on is creating dashboards for our table of information which um, essentially is going to show uh, just useful information in the form of tables and charts so that we can use this information in management decisions and things like that. Um, and so we're just going to show you how to use that information and create these charts and uh, add them to our dashboard um, so that we can use that information. So just to show you a couple of the ways that <coughs> this table is uh, going to work, or this dashboard here is uh, we have a basic pie chart that's kind of show us uh, percentages of each of the sales representatives, um, analysis of sales trends, which will give us each of the representatives and kind of uh, what what they've been doing throughout the current year and also in prior years. Um, you can see that we have used some of the uh, the spark lines here, uh, like we learned before as well. Uh, to kind of demonstrate what's been going on there. And then we also um, create another table here that uh, we can actually cater to each individual salesperson and show what their results have been and for each of the different uh, brick styles that they've, they've sold. Um, so I'll just kind of show you how that works. We have Janet Sellers information here. Come down here to Mary Daniel and the chart changes and shows you what Mary has done. So that's just kind of how uh, our dashboard is going to work and um, we're going to show you how to create all that information and uh, plug that into our own dashboard in Excel. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to show you how to do is uh, create a, a graph, uh, just a basic graph here that, like we have in our dashboard. Um, we're going to create a bar graph and what we'll want to do to start with that is uh, come to our preparation. Um, worksheet that we have down here. Um, and we're going to start out in, in the Alan Pearson column first. Um, now what we're going to be doing is referencing uh, some information from our, our first pivot table. So the, the way that we'll want to do that is just to hit the equal sign in cell B12, uh, come over to our pivot 1 table, uh, come up here to the grand total for Alan Pearson in cell H5, and highlight that. You'll see up here that it gives us a get pivot data function. Um, what we'll want to do to reference that to the rest of the cells on our preparation worksheet is we'll want to delete Alan Pearson's name here so that it's not just referencing him. And then we'll, uh, okay, and after we've done that, we'll just go to back to our preparation tab here. Um, Move that preparation reference there. And then we're going to want to reference cell A12 uh, for Alan Pearson instead of keeping his name there. Uh, but the key thing that we'll want to do is we want to lock in cell A with the dollar sign and then leave that 12 open so that it can scroll down through the different names um, on that chart. Now after that, uh, what we want to do is reference the categories that we have here in commercial, government, and residential. So we'll type parentheses or uh, quotation marks, category, close quotation, and then after that, um, we'll want to reference cell B11 here. To show the commercial. And then what we'll want to do is um, is uh, put a dollar sign in front of the 11 to lock that in. Um, 
Then what we do is hit enter since our function is finished. And that gives us our number here. Um, and then after that, it's pretty simple. We just want to drag this over and copy it to each of those categories for Alan. And then double click it down and it will fill in all of our numbers for us. Now what we want to do after that is we want to create a the bar graph for our dashboard down here. And so what we'll do is highlight this ta this entire table. Um, and after that it's pretty ba basic. Just go to the insert tab, select a bar chart, and I'll just pick the basic 2D bar chart here. It's going to create that, and then what I'll want to do is just cut that, take it over to our dashboard here, and paste it right there, and just fit it into the rest of the dashboard. And that'll give us our bar chart there. Um, and so you can see that uh, the way that we created this pie chart that's already in there is, is basically the same way that I just showed you. Um, and we just have a bar a pie chart there and then our bar chart here for, for our information. All right, so what we're going to do next is basically what Adam did earlier. But what we're going to do is we're going to format the table so we can um, filter the the sales representative so it's going to be easier for um, the manager to track the sales of each representative. So this particular um, chart is referenced to this table over here in preparation sheet uh, where they represent the style and the quantity sold over here by Scott Edwards. And what we're going to do is we're going to use a function that is called group box that will help us filter uh, the representative here. So we'll just do that. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to delete this um, table over here so I can show you how uh, to do it from scratch. Delete this. And we're going to go back to um, the preparation sheet and what we need to have is this table over here that shows um, the different kind of tiles over here and the number of quantities sold uh, per representative. So we're, what we're going to do is we're going to use a function that that's called group box. It's in the developer tab and you just click it and then you click insert and it's right under active controls just click this group box information and then just create a box over here. And as, as you can see, it has a drop down arrow that will let us filter your representative. So we're just going to format it. Just right click it and format control. So once we just right click this group box over here and go to control tab and we're going to input the range or the list that we're going to put uh, the filter in. So let's copy this. And we're going to type in preparation because we're going to copy and paste it on the other sheet. And we're going to link it to cell B19. As you can see, it's already linked to it, but I'm just going to just click on it. Basically, what's going to happen is, depending on the name that is put or that is filtered here on the group box, it's going to show a it's just going to show a different number. For example, we choose Alan Pearson, it's going to refer to number one, and Scott Edwards is number five. So basically, that's what that that's what the group box is for. And we're going to do another function that's called index. As you can see, it's already here. It's already been typed. Um, just click equals and then index, and then open and close parentheses, and inside the index. We're just going to show the range of the cell. As you can see here, it's highlighted in blue. 
and it's already here and we're gonna put a comma and it's gonna show a cell reference it's gonna be 19 and depending on what number the reference is on it's gonna show the name of the representative and just comma and then one just click enter it's gonna show Scott Edwards and for the table this one you, you just type it in and for the quantity it's basically what Adam did earlier is you go and click equals get pivot table we're gonna do the quantity basically what we're gonna do is we're just gonna go equals so what we're just gonna do is we're just gonna click equals and then you're gonna go to pivot number one and then just go to the grand total and then the only difference is we're gonna be choosing style uh, earlier um, Adam showed you the to reference it using the category either commercial government or residential or but for this case we're gonna uh, reference it to style and then we're gonna use the cell reference A23 over here so it's gonna get the pivot quantity or data that's in pivot number one that is referred to here in England. I'm just gonna enter that and it's gonna just copy it for all the cells over here. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna create a chart using this information over here. Um, just click insert ribbon and then choose a choose the chart you want to produce voila, we have the chart over here you can actually move this just see if I can do that so basically we the group box is it's pretty neat because you can actually move it over here so you can fill just like the previous chart we have and then just click on any cell and we can we can filter out the representative and the quantity of um, styles of bricks that they sold and then we can just copy paste it on the other sheet as well for the, the group box itself you can copy and paste it wherever, wherever we want we can move it over here or at the bottom so basically that's it and that's how you create a dashboard from the data you have over here thank you for listening mahalo